So in this case, if you give her the gold, you start dating, you don't get along, break up. If you break up as a man, you lose a gold, she keeps it. If she breaks up with you, you lose a gold and she keeps it. I'm going to get her in the call back. <laughs> This here is the mosque. I'll be talking about since the topic now. I hope no one gets offended. The mosque is just a prayer room. We don't pay taxes to the mosque. We don't get married in the mosque. We don't even have anyone living in the mosque. Just a prayer room empty. Women and men are separate. Ladies prayer room, gents prayer room. In the same mosque, separate completely. You don't even see each other. Any Muslim here? You have Muslim friends? Yes. Have you seen them pray? Mm -hmm. And we pray in this way, then we kneel to God in this way. So imagine doing this and there's a girl with a nice ass doing the same in front of you. <laughs> You'll be distracted. That's why we're seven in the mosque. We pray five times a day. Every time takes about five minutes. I'm busy, I'm sick, I'm traveling, I can catch up later. I don't have to stop to go to the mosque. I can also pray at home. I can pray anywhere. Do Muslims believe in Jesus as the Messiah or not? Do Muslims believe in Jesus at all? Or not? Messiah? Okay. In Arabia, we have Jews, we have Christians, we have Muslims. The history started with Abraham. Now pay attention to this. Listen to this. Abraham had one wife, but not children. Sarah. He got a second wife. As a Muslim, I'm allowed to do this. If my wife cannot have a children, I can have a second wife. He got a second wife and they got one son with her. His name was Ishmael. But the first wife got pregnant. He took her back. As a Muslim, I'm allowed to do this. If I divorce my wife and she is pregnant, I take her back and the divorce is void. Now he has two wives, two children, Isaac and Ishmael. Sarah and Hajar. Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, the same line, came Moses and Jesus. Hajar, the second wife, Ishmael, the same line, came Muhammad. The three religions of Muhammad and Jesus and Moses are called Abrahamic religions. Because of Abraham, each and every time I pray, I must praise Abraham. Excuse me. I must mention Abraham in my prayer. And this is the reason we face Mecca when we pray. This house in Mecca is built by Abraham and Ishmael, not by Muhammad. Muslims have a different story about Jesus. We believe that Jesus' first miracle was to speak as a baby. Now in Christianity, turning water into wine in Islam, when Mary got pregnant, she left her people, she turned having a child. She was accused of committing adultery. Jesus spoke as a baby. My mom is a noble woman who both are chosen from God, who are sent to you from God. She didn't commit any adultery. Muslims believe that Jesus was taken to heaven alive before crucifixion, not after. We believe that the one who got crucified was Judas. The one who betrayed Jesus, not Jesus. We believe that Jesus is the Messiah. We do believe in Jesus as the Messiah and the messenger and the prophet. We believe in Jesus' return as well, that he will come to save everyone from the Antichrist. We believe in that and our religion, our prophet said to us, when Jesus returns, follow him, he is the Messiah. We pray only to the Father. As a Muslim, I believe in Jesus, in Moses, in the Holy Spirit. I pray only to the Father. I believe that the Father is the one who created all of them. I don't pray to Muhammad. I love him, respect him as much as I love Jesus and respect him, but I pray to the Father. In Hebrew, they say Ulihim, in Arabic, we say Allah. Am I allowed to marry a Christian girl or a Jewish girl or not? If she converts, right? Let's take a walk. It's a lot of information at once. So I'll take you inside one of the houses. We'll have some coffee and talk. He's answering a lot of questions that I had. 
and uh, I was going to talk to him after the tour but I guess we can still do that but he's answering a lot of questions that I have so again guys it's important to understand cultures and not be uh, influenced by just what you hear on TV and actually talk to people who leave the culture come to the country and talk to them directly you learn a lot more the letter P there is no P in our language and that can cause a lot of trouble here some such with me two weeks ago a gentleman from Texas I still remember him I asked him what he does for a living and he was like I'm a pastor he wanted to say that he is a pastor and I didn't get it I got completely that he is a pastor <laughs> it was really awkward <laughs> In, in, uh, it's common here to hear in a restaurant someone offering you Bibsi to drink. Bibsi is Pepsi. There is no P in our language. Any P is replaced by B. Okay, so stress that letter when you speak here or else people will misunderstand you. <laughs> 28 letters, we read it from the right to the left. The Arab world is 22 countries, 390 million people. One language, five dialects. The dialects can be very different. If I speak with someone from Sudan, from Algeria, from Saudi, we understand each other. There is standard Arabic. So when it comes to dialect, it's difficult. The Quran is written in the five dialects, combination of all. Um, it says, for example, in the Quran, if your wife is mean to you, now the Arabic word is faidhun. Faidhun. No. Standard Arabic, in one dialect it means talk to them. In another dialect, it means bite them. <laughs> bite them. From talk to them to bite them. It says, it says if they are still mean to you, Father Bohun, Father Bohun, it means keep a distance. In other dialect, it means beat them up. <laughs> so it can really, <laughs> you can end up in jail if you misunderstand this. These characters here are taken from Sanskrit language. These are the numbers we learn and we use in Arabia along with the Arabic numbers. The numbers used in the West are the Arabic numbers. The Latin numbers was like V and I and X and AD and H. AD is your calendar. 2021, H is our calendar. Between our calendar and your calendar, 600 years. This year in our calendar, 1443. Our language is written from the right to the left. Our social life is opposite as well as your social life. Here in Arabia, we start with engagement, then dating. <laughs> engagement first, dating later. As you see, most of the Arab women out, they're wearing a black dress, very loose clothes. So as a man, you can never tell if she has a good figure or a bad figure, you would never know. Hi. Hi. I've told, no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. So the ladies here will wear black outside. When there are with other ladies, they take off the black dress. So if you want to know a girl here has a good figure or a bad figure, the right person to ask is your mom or your sister. She has seen her without the black dress. <laughs> if a woman here covers her face, you shouldn't approach her. She is married or engaged, she is not interested. If a woman has henna or gold, she is not available, you should not approach her. So here, when a woman is married, they show that they are married by covering the face. And that was very common in the past. Nowadays, they don't. They stick to the henna or the gold. If she's available, you can just see her face. You don't really know much, it's all covered. I take my mom or my sister and go visit her at her place. What's it? My mom or my sister. I don't take any male members with me normally in the first place. She comes in the room, gives me the welcome drink, and that would be coffee. She takes a look at me. If she's not interested, she will walk out again with the room. Normally they will come in completely covered. Some of them will cover their face. So you don't even get to see her face. If she is interested, she will sit down. Take off this, take off the scarf, so you see her hair. Take off the black dress and she will be wearing something very beautiful. She will not be naked. Don't you get excited, gentlemen? She will, be <laughs> <laughs> she will be wearing something very beautiful like a dress. So you see what you are getting into. If you don't like what you are getting into, as a man, what do you do then? She just showed you and you are not interested anymore. Yeah. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> leave the coffee, take your mom and leave, tear off your mobile, block her and her family everywhere, and ghosting for some time. 
<laughs> will know that you are not interested. You are allowed to see the girl's beauty one time. One time. Make a decision, engagement or not. <laughs> to do the engagement, you have to pay her gold jewelry. <laughs> Average, five to 10,000 euros. You give this to the girl, she's your girlfriend. No dating before this point. So you give it a deposit, the security, the jewelry, then you start going out. If you don't get along, break up. Engagement in our culture is not a promise to marry. It's different. It's mm. dating in your culture. Mm. But in this case, if you give her the gold, you start dating, you don't get along, break up. If you break up as a man, you lose a gold, she keeps it. If she breaks up with you, you lose a gold and she keeps it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to get any gold back. <laughs> gold is gone. So here, <laughs> dating is very expensive here, man. Don't, don't, don't do dating here. <laughs> if you get along and you would like to get married, we marry at home. We don't marry in the mosque. You have to pay the girl one more time. Gold jewelry and perfumes and saffron. Average two times what you paid for engagement. Oh, really? And then you have to pay the family of the girl. The family of the girl ask for the dowry. I'm going to take the girl and go. And this why we marry at home, you have to negotiate. We, we negotiate in a very polite way. So if the family says one million dollars, I'd be like, no, that's too much. I like her, I'm interested to be part of your family. I'll just pay 100,000. I'm not saying, no, she is not worth it or I have a better offer somewhere else. Or, or. So you bargain in a polite way, or else you will be in trouble. It starts this year, the dowry was $90,000. You give this to the family of the girl. And then we agree on the late dowry. The late dowry is an amount of money that you will have to pay her if you divorce her, or your family has to pay her if you die. So she's secured against divorce, against your death. If she divorces you, you don't have to pay her. It was her decision. After marriage, the wife rights in Islam are... Take a deep breath. Your money is her money. Her money is her money. Okay? <laughs> you cannot take money from your wife. You cannot have one bank account together. It's forbidden to have even one account together. You have no access to her money, but she has access to yours. If the man is tight-fisted, she is allowed to steal your money. By religion and by the law and by the culture, she can steal your money. You must keep her in a good way of living. Now, do you remember why did I say you are allowed to marry a Christian girl or a Jewish girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper, it's easier, and I will ask her not to convert. <laughs> keep your beliefs as you are. Do not convert. <laughs> We will try to ask them to convert after marriage, not before. So I got away with all this already. As a husband, let's say you're a good husband, a loving husband, but your wife is mean. And you cannot divorce her, her family secured her with a lot against divorce. Your only way out is to have a second wife. There is no other way out for you. I'm married here and I'm proposing here. She can say yes or no. She knows that I have one wife. She says yes. The first one can accept or divorce you. If she divorces you, you don't have to pay the late dowry. If both of them accept, you have two wives. How many wives can a Muslim man have? As many as you like. Four. Maximum four. four. If you have two wives, or three or four, you must keep them in the same condition. <laughs> treat them equally. And that is the dangerous part. To treat them equally is very dangerous. You have to keep one wife in one house. So guys, what I learned, a Muslim man can marry a non-Muslim woman, but can I marry an Hindu? It has to be um, uh, something, I forgot, like under the same umbrella of religion. Um, as Christians and Muslims both believe in uh, Abraham, and they just don't pray to him, but Hindus and Buddhists don't. Um, so they cannot marry them and if you're a Muslim woman you cannot marry a non-Muslim man you have to convert in order to marry a Muslim woman interesting things so um, again thanks for continuing watching this uh, video I really really appreciate that it means a lot to me 
Uh, I'm learning a lot, and I hope you are you are as well. Uh, subscribe, put some comments, uh, tell me how you feel about what I've discussed so far, and uh, let's exchange on Instagram, iVentures, and uh, you know I will obviously respond to your comments on YouTube as well. Thank you guys, and we can treat the tour.